Hi everyone, uh, this is raw footage from the Race of Champions Rock Factor shootout that took place in London a couple of weeks ago. Uh, we were at the Olympic Stadium in Stratford, which was an absolutely crazy venue to have it at. And I was just looking through the footage and thought it would be cool to throw the whole thing up in its entirety to give you an idea of how it all went down. Uh, so I'm just going to let this play, I'm going to drop in and out with some commentary as it goes along and kind of explain what was happening and what I was thinking. So there's McDoon just after finishing his run. Bradley behind me, the other competitor, and behind him, Alex Bunkham and Jason Plato, who had just done their runs. Um, at this stage, we didn't really know what the format was going to be. We weren't told when we'd be up. We weren't told that uh, there's me smacking my head off the canopy. Uh, we weren't told um, how much we were going to get to drive. We weren't told whether this was going to be it or whether we were going to get a chance to actually race off against each other on the track as well because there was a suggestion of that but I don't think it happened in the end because it was just too wet and to be fair they didn't need to risk the machinery any more than they needed to so it was probably a good call on their part. And to my right there is Jolian Palmer who will be racing for Renault in Formula 1 next year. Uh, he of course is the son of ex-Formula 1 driver Jonathan Palmer who owns Palmer Sport and that's the race school that Bradley actually works for so an interesting little tie up there uh, and for those of you who don't know basically this competition it's called the rock factor myself and Bradley were the two main finalists to get through to the end and it, it was designed to give a lesser known driver a chance to show their skills against the best drivers in the world and it was initially only meant to be happening on this skills challenge course that you see in front of me there but with about 24 hours well 24 hours before this was filmed we got an email saying Jorge Lorenzo, the MotoGP champion, had got injured and that we, one of us, would be filling in for him at the main event. And that was absolutely the most insane news to get before heading over to do, you know, what was a big deal in itself to begin with, now became the biggest deal of my life. And nothing could take away from that, it was absolutely a huge opportunity. So yeah, we're just getting ready here, we still don't really know what's happening, but standing around watching, a bit restless. You can see Susie Wolf there, She's uh, she was struggling to get the car to spin and it was very interesting. A lot of these professional drivers were having trouble on this little course. Um, the thing that really stood out for me is if you take somebody out of their comfort zone, take them out of the series, out of the cars, uh, out of the environments that they're not used to and put them here in a little aerial atom around an auto test course and they can be almost made look silly and that just really opened my eyes to the fact that if you take away any familiarity it really levels the playing field no matter how experienced you are um, that guy to my right there that's or to my left I should say is Andy Mills he uh, was one of the main PR guys that I was uh, in touch with as this whole event was happening and in the, in, in the build up to it and in front of me there is Andy Prio the multiple world touring car champion and MBE uh, another really nice guy and he was actually quite quick on the course um, so I think at this point now we're about to get called and yeah as we, as we make our way through the standing water have to be careful not to get wet feet because our, our boots aren't very wet or our, our boots aren't waterproof so yeah I'm just gonna drop out here now and let the audio play as it was and you can kind of see how it went So the mechanic is bringing me over to the car now for the first time. Never seen one of these things in person before. First time to sit in one, to drive one. 
Uh, I'm not too pushed about how it looks really, it looks a bit weird but again that's the least of my worries. I want to get strapped into it, I want to be nice and comfortable in my new environment. I'm not going to have too much time to drive it so the sooner I get in and get some information the better. There's Andy just asking me, he, he didn't even know really what was going on at this stage so Again, it was there was a lot of uncertainty. Um, he's just taking out the pads there that were in for Andy Prio, and as I sit in, I feel actually that this is a really comfy car. It's a nice little nice little race car, and yeah, really cozy. So you do a second, yeah. all right? We do one practice, two time runs, and we do one each. Huh? So you do his practice, yeah, your practice. And that guy there was one of the main organizers. He was just uh, confirming that we would do one practice and then two timed, and then be back and forth between the two. Just playing with the handbrake there to get a feel for that. And yeah, again, you're in the car now. It's nice and snug, and you're just trying to focus on what you got to do. This is normal. Um, Happy that. Bit tight, right, sir? Bit tight here. And I think at this point here I had a I had a lanyard around my neck and it was it was digging into me so uh, I just needed to loosen up and uh, hand that to the other guy there so um, it wasn't just when the belts are really tight basically it, it was just pulling it into me and it was uh, starting to dig in so I just gave that to him that's what all that was about. That's the end of part one guys hope you enjoyed it um, part two is going to be linked in the description and it continues right from here so you can see my first practice and then the two time runs I just wanted to split this in half because it's actually quite a long video so it'd be good to have it in two parts um, but yeah again I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in part two <laughs>